All right, we are uh, we are now joined by uh, Minnesota Vikings wide receiver and fantasy football royalty Adam Thielen. Thank you to the Over Easy Bar for making you available to us, Adam. Appreciate you joining the fantasy football happy hour here. And so, I guess my first question to you is: Do you play fantasy football? Have you ever played it? Uh, I did all through high school or all through college. Okay. And then uh, I haven't played for a long time. Right. But well, I will get back into it when I'm done playing. All right. Well, we love that. Any any help we can give you, uh, we're right here for you. Do you remember any of the players that were on your team when you were in college? Uh, I had Julio Jones. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Um, oh man, I'm trying to think. I should know. I should know because I was I was into it. It was a it was a big deal. But. Uh, once I got in the NFL and and having to uh, set a line uh, a lineup and I'm like right. oh shoot I'm, you know I'm on I'm not gonna do it on the bus ride to the to the game <laughs> the stadium so, right yeah, so, no. so I quit doing it but uh, but like I said it's it's a lot of fun yeah so did you have you ever uh, when you've interacted with Julio whether you've seen him at games or other NFL events you ever said you know I, you are my fantasy team have you ever said that to Julio no I haven't done that because I. Uh, you know that's it's kind of a weird a weird thing to say I think but uh, I have so much respect for him and I actually have his jersey hung up in my uh, and on my like jersey wall that I have so there's only so many spots on that wall yeah and, and uh, he's up there so a ton of respect for him he, yep. he's one of the all-time greats and and um, just speaking from experience yeah it's that's a good move not to not to tell you know NFL <laughs> players that are on your fantasy team I've I've done that uh, done that more than a few by the way I have a uh, I have a dynasty team that I've had with all my buddies from college. I've had you since you were a rookie. Just MBD. <laughs> I but, love um, it. Yeah. yeah. There you go. I appreciate that. Yeah. Well, Adam, we are on Radio Row for the Super Bowl. So let's talk about golf. Uh, all right. Something you really <laughs> want to it. get into. Yeah. So you played in the Waste Management Phoenix Open Pro Am yesterday. Can you give some, uh, just uh, talk about what that experience was like? Oh, it's a great. And who'd, I, who'd you play with? Yeah. So uh, Billy Horschel was our pro. Nice. Um, and uh, it, it, it's my favorite thing to do. I'm a huge golfer. I love to play golf. and. To be able to be around those guys for nine to 18 holes, uh, a pro golfer, to see how they play the game, see how smooth they swing it, um, the kind of the thought process. I'm always talking to their caddy to say, hey, uh, you know, what are you looking here? What's the wind doing? What, are you, what yards are you playing? You know, what's your thought process on stuff? It's awesome. I love it. It's, it's, I'm, I kind of like, I kind of like geek out with that. So uh, it, it's a special experience. And then the, the Waste Management Open, I mean, the atmosphere. Yeah. It's like a football game on the 16th hole, you know, right. it's, it's nuts. It's crazy. 16, 17, 18. Um, it, it's the coolest atmosphere. And I think it's so great for the game of golf to, to get some people out there that maybe aren't golf fans that just want to go party. And then they get done with the weekend and say, oh, golf's actually pretty cool. Right. <laughs> and uh, so I think it's great. Yeah, I mean, it's it's incredible that it's happening the week of the Super Bowl in Arizona. I mean, yeah. This, this wow. whole town nuts. has just been like, just been absolutely nuts. Speaking of nuts, I want to ask your, uh, tell me, take me through the emotions of the game against the Colts. <laughs> you know, like you guys are fighting, you guys, you guys want home field advantage. You're right there, you're thick, and all of a sudden the Colts like wax you in the first half. You're down 33 nothing, and then you make the greatest comeback in NFL history. I just yeah, take me through crazy. that game I'll, and yeah, I'll give you a little glimpse of, of where your head's at going through a game like that. Well, first of all, the worst thing ever is when you're getting beat down. It's right. just it's horrible because the defense is playing soft. They're they're not playing man coverage. Um, it's just it, you, you're getting you're getting like they're kind of just sitting back there and then they're teeing off on you when you catch <laughs> the football. So it's it's not a good feeling. So anytime you get to that point, you're like, oh no, like this is not good. Um, but I think there's always something in the back of your head that, hey, like, just let's make some plays. Like, let's just get out of this rut. Let's get some momentum going our way, and you never know what will happen. Luckily, at, at that point, we already had some experience with some crazy games and comebacks, and, and we were just building some confidence in who we were as a football team and kind of the, um, the culture that we were building of just that never-quit mentality. And um, so once we kind of got that second half, we score a touchdown you get a little bit more confidence. Yeah. Then you score another touchdown, you're like, okay. You get a turnover, you're like, yeah. oh, we're in this game. Oh, we can win this game. And at once you get to that point, momentum switching your side, you're at home, the crowd's getting back into it. Uh, you feel like, hey, there's a, there's a real chance here. And, and that's when you start, you know, kind of really believing. Um, and, uh, and then to be able to finish it off and win that football game, um, you know, it, it just shows the type of character that we have in that locker room, the type of leadership we have in the coaching staff and, and the organization. So pretty cool. Yep. Was, that, was that turnover, was that the moment where you were like, we're going to win this game? Or like, I mean, there was yeah, probably a moment so. where you, even though the scoreboard says you guys are down, where you're like, we're winning this damn game. I think when we scored the second touchdown yeah. and, uh, you know, made it a manageable game um, and there's still a lot of time left on the clock. 
Um, I think that's when everybody was like, all right, like, like this is this is real now. Like we can win this football game. Um, and then that's when again, like that momentum switches. And in football, I feel like more than any other sport, the momentum means so much, especially when you're at home. Um, when that momentum kind of just completely flipped, I'm like, we we all kind of felt it, and we kind of knew that 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 this is going to be a this is gonna be a good football game. And, and listen, and you know, games come and go, but like. 40 years from now, people will still be talking about that game. I mean, you were literally yeah. part of NFL history in yeah. that game. I think as well, watching at home, the last few minutes of the game, even when it was tied, even when you were down one score, it never felt like the Colts were going to win. It yeah. just felt like it, it was it an absolute It felt inevitable. Yeah, that it really you guys did were... feel inevitable. Yeah. Yeah. Again, yeah. when you swing that much momentum, yeah. it, it is hard. It, either way, right? Like when, yeah. in the first half, we couldn't we couldn't flip the momentum, and you're just you, you're you're just like fighting an uphill battle. You you can't get out of that rut. Uh, so when that momentum flipped, it's it's an unbelievable thing what that what that does for a football team. Yep, Adam, you mentioned the amount of crazy games that you guys played all season. I think you were setting records for record in in one score close games. Playing in so many of those games, did you have like a special amount of confidence towards the end of the season that if it was close, you guys were just going to capitalize? Yeah, 100%. As the season just kept progressing and we had more of those one-score games that we were able to finish off, you just got more and more confidence. And as a football team, that's huge. It's just like momentum, right? Confidence is huge. Confidence is key. And the more confidence we got in those situations, even, even you look at that playoff game that we lost, I felt like there was a look in everybody's eyes that we were going to win this football game. You know, we got that ball... Um, with a couple minutes left to go to go down and tie the game, there was a look like, hey, guys, we've been here before. Um, we've practiced this situation a ton of times in practice. We've had real games uh, experience with this. We're going to go down and we're going to score. We're going to go win this football game. Unfortunately, we didn't get that done, but it's cool to have that confidence um, and that trust in one another, and, and you have to have that to have any chance. I want to talk about the Vikings offense now and the difference that from two years ago and this year under Kevin O'Connell, we we on the show liked it a lot. We're like, look, this guy came from came from LA, came from McVay. If you look at what O'Connell's done, look at what Stafford did under McConnell, they're gonna throw. You know, they're, it's gonna yeah. be a very different approach than Mike Zimmer. We liked we like Kirk as a as a fantasy sleeper this year quite a bit. Obviously, Justin's going very high in drafts, and so we liked all the guys. So I want you to talk to me about uh, sort of a two-part question. Uh, just generally the changes that you saw in the offense and what you're looking forward to next year and your own role in it. Yeah, I think I think this offense has a potential to be um, unbelievable. Um, the pieces that we have put in place, um, just the offensive scheme and the and the um, the coaching staff that's put together that that game plans. They're, they're really good at what they do. Um, I think that we didn't hit our full potential this year, um, but uh, I feel more confidence than ever in in the coaching staff and the players that we're going to find a way to continue to get better. Um, and again, and that's saying that's saying that when we actually had a really good offense, right? right. Uh, we were we were statistically a very good offense, and yes. I just feel like there's a lot more potential than what we showed on the football field. And and uh, you know, I think uh, the, the the sky's the limit for this team. And you say that every year, but I truly do believe uh, what Minnesota is building from a culture perspective, from a character perspective, um, from a leadership perspective, is something special. And I think that. Um, it's only going to get better, which is crazy. We had 13 wins this year, and I think it's only going to get better. Speaking of that, what did TJ Hawkinson add to this offense when he came over midseason? Another playmaker, another guy that can um, play at a high level. Um, not only that, a great teammate, uh, somebody that I've really enjoyed getting to know and enjoyed playing on Sundays with, uh, which is very special. And and, uh, and I don't take that stuff for granted, you know. Uh, going on year 11 I don't know how many yeah. more years I'm gonna play and you just you just tend to later in your career start to just really soak up the guys you play with especially the guys that not only are great football players but they're great off the field I mean you look at a guy like Delvin Cook I mean one of my favorite teammates I've ever had in my career and, and to be able to share a locker room with guys like that um, I could I could literally name a list of 20 yeah, guys yeah, of course. and uh, um, and that's that's really cool and that's something that that uh, that you don't take for granted. Yeah. So there are a lot of superstar big names on that offense. You mentioned a couple: Hawkinson, uh, Dalvin Cook, yourself, Justin Jefferson. Is there someone under the radar that perhaps doesn't get as much attention that you think could be in for a big year next year? Yeah, KJ Osborne. Okay. He's a he's a special football player, special person, um, and a special friend of mine. Um, we have an unbelievable receiver room. Not not only talent wise, but that group. I tell you what, if if there was a camera, a fly on the wall in that room, people saw that room. It's 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 an absolute ball. I mean, we have a great time. Time. We joke, we laugh, we have fun, and but we're but we're football players and we love the game of football. So it's a really special group. But I just think that 
he has um, he has the ability to be a number one receiver in this league, and uh, he he has so much potential. And and whenever he gets opportunity, he makes big plays. And the thing that I love about him is he doesn't get a lot of opportunity sometimes throughout a game. And but when you need a big play, boom, he's there to make it. So when he gets those opportunities, I just think that the sky's the limit for him. Uh, Adam, last question. Uh, I have two last questions quickly. Uh, first question is I want you to take me behind the scenes of Kirk Cousins dancing shirtless with a bunch <laughs> of chains on the team plane, which was the viral video of the NFL season. Take me by. Does someone suggest that to Kirk? Is Kirk doing that on his own? Like, who decides to film it? Like, yeah. take me behind the scenes of that moment. <laughs> well, it's, it's slowly progressed. So it started with one chain and a couple of pictures right. and a little bit of dancing. And then, you know, as we started, as, as we kept winning, and it was it, it, it tended to be crazy games and on the road. So we're getting back on a plane together. And, and usually it takes forever. You sit on the plane forever before you take off. So everybody's kind of, you know, having a good time, hanging out, talking about the game. And then uh, as it progressed, it turned into no shirt. <laughs> <laughs> right. And a, and a lot of chains. Yeah. <laughs> and a lot of money worth of chains on his neck. And uh, and then dance moves, some music. Are those guys donating their own chains? I, I assume Kirk doesn't own those chains. Chains. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Kirk does not own a chain as of right now, so uh, or a grill. But uh, uh, supposedly that's a work in progress. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, it just it just shows this team. I mean, it, it's a group of guys that loves the game of football, is passionate about, it, is going to pour their soul, heart and soul into it. Uh, but we're going to have fun and we're going to enjoy each other. And uh, it was it was the most fun I've I've ever had in my career. Um, you know, maybe a little frustrated at, at times as far as opportunity and, and on a personal level, but I've never been more excited to come into a building and, and go to work because of the coaching staff and the players that were in that building. Last one for me. Talk to me about Over Easy Bar, why you've uh, decided to partner with them and what they bring to the table. Yeah, uh, you know, not very often. I'm not, I shouldn't say that. Uh, it, it's really cool to be able to partner with a company that you really strongly believe in. And that's usually now where I'm at in my career. I, I only kind of uh, a partner or, or do stuff for companies that I strongly believe in. I take the product, I use it, um, and Overeasy is one of those companies. Uh, uh, it's it's a healthy um, uh, a bar that can supplement as a breakfast. I use it for a breakfast bar. I use it as a afternoon snack on the golf course. A quick, easy on the go for the kids. Um, and usually, when something is healthy. Um, it usually doesn't taste good or it doesn't have great texture, right? Uh, this checked both those boxes for me and my wife, and uh, that's why we um, are fully bought into to what they're doing. Not only that, though, um, they, they're doing great things in the community, and they align perfectly with the Phelan Foundation as, as far as um, you know, helping youth reach their full potential. And, in fact, they are donating all proceeds from online sales this weekend all the way through the Super Bowl um, to um, children of fallen um, uh, patriots. Wow. Uh, which is unbelievable. That's amazing. And again, right aligned with the Thielen Foundation and what we believe in. So a great company and, um, again, a product that I strongly believe in and, and, and use uh, with my family. Well, thank you, Over Easy, and thank you, Adam Thielen, for coming here and uh, being so generous with your time. Uh, continued success to you, my friend, to the Vikings, to you, to your family. And listen, whenever it is you decide to hang it up and get back into fantasy football, come join right, us. Let's come do be it. on our show. I love Any it. Any help we can get. All right, man, we appreciate you. Hey, it's Matthew Berry from NBC Sports and Rotoworld.com. Just want to thank you so much for watching what you just watched, or at least being too lazy to click out of it after the you know autoplay just kept it going. So either way, thank you so much for just letting it scroll by your screen. And now I'd like to ask you respectfully, 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 okay, respectfully, please subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel for the latest NFL news, fantasy headlines from Rotoworld, and betting analysis from NBC Sports Edge.